Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to make a video about 10 things to uh, help you improve your financial situation. And uh, this follows on from the uh, FIRE video that uh, I just put up recently. And um, if you don't know about FIRE, it's to uh, be financially independent and retiring early, FIRE. And um, I had a little bit to say about that particular movement. Um, but it just kind of got me thinking about what are some of some sensible things that you can do to live a you know slightly more frugal life and um, have extra money lying around. So I'm just going to make this one take video. So yeah, um, bear with me. I've got a list of 10 things that you can do that I do, I personally do. I will say more about each of these in a later video. I'll break them down. But um, this is just a 10 that on the top of my head that I uh, jotted down for things that you can do that uh, make sense financially. Um, so here we go. Number one, and I'll do all of these, all of these, I do them, all of them. Number one, um, and I've got two here that have a little star next to them, the first one and the second one. And the first one is to start a tracking spreadsheet. So start a financial tracking spreadsheet, everybody. It's pretty easy. Just use Excel or numbers or number or whatever it's called on Apple, right? Um, but yeah, Excel spreadsheet, super easy. Um, just start tracking your finances. Don't even worry about a budget or anything like that. But just write down your bills, start tracking, all right? Um, let, let that tool um, be something to help you out with your, um, with your financial, um, I guess, awareness of where your money's going, okay? That, at, at a minimum. So that's number one, and that is the number one. All right, number two is cook at home, everyone. That's it cook at home. And I did just uh, mention in a fire video that, you know, eating out sometimes, sometimes, no problem, no problem at all. But the majority of your um, food intake, 90%, I'm going to say 90% should be cooked at home, right? Make it at home. It's like way, way, way cheaper than eating out. So cook at home is number two, all right? Learn to cook or even just learn to use a microwave because <laughs> it saves you a lot of money. All right, number three, um, buy bulk specials. We do this, well, my wife in particular does this quite often. So if there's something that you know you're going to re buy recurringly, uh, you're going to buy it over and over and over again, and it's on special, then get on it. Like, just buy it. You know you're going to have it anyway. You, you know you're going to need it over and over again anyway, so buy it on special. So the things that... Um, um, just something that comes to mind, we drink Pepsi Max and they come in these packs of 30 and sometimes they are on special and they're way cheaper. They're like 30%, 40% cheaper sometimes than a regular price. Buy a couple of cartons. We, we, we've got a couple of cartons sitting in the garage right now. So um, there's nothing wrong with buying bulk if you, you know, um, use a little bit of storage space. But apart from that, it makes sense. All right, number four. Low cost activities. All right, so low cost activities uh, should be a part of what you do. You shouldn't be going out all the time. And, and what I'm saying by that is there are some things that I, that we like doing, and we do a bit of, um, I like to do more of some of this stuff, but we do a bit of, that doesn't cost a lot of money. For example, going to the beach, awesome activity, very low cost. Um, going for a bushwalk or a, or a hike, all right? Going just for a walk. Um, yeah, we've had some awesome um, walks where they're nice and relaxing. You're spending time with your family. Um, yeah, definitely going for walks. Um, going for a bike ride. Um, you know, love going for a, a ride in the in the um, suburb here, and um, there's lots of nice paths. It's you're outside, getting fresh air. How good is that? And then another one, the last one, in terms of low cost activities, is visiting family. Like just you know, it doesn't cost a lot to just drive to. Um, to family and spend some time with them and you know whatever it's um again pretty low cost comparatively to for example the, the alternatives are going for playing tamping bowls we did that the other day over 100 bucks <laughs> gone <laughs> just like that um and it was fun and everything but um it's not something you do all the time so i guess mixing up your activities with some low cost activities rather than everything being the the, the stuff where you have to spend money all right number five um, stay in your current home. So whether you're renting or owning or whatever, I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I get the thought of, like, maybe we should upgrade, get a bigger house, or, oh, wouldn't it be better if we lived in this other suburb or what have you. 
and that's lovely, um, you know, but there's a lot of costs involved in just moving. Even if you, even if you um, end up getting a, a, a place that's more cost effective, the actual move itself is, is there's, there's quite a bit involved there. And then when you moved, sometimes you want to upgrade a few things or you want to um, add a few items to your household, um, like a new bed or some more storage or, you know, upgrade your telly or whatever. And then the costs add up real quick. So stay in your current home. If you're renting, again, if you can um, try not to move between rentals, um, again, that's going to save you money. All right, number six, another food one, pack your own lunch. All right, it's not hard to do. Just, just pack your own lunch. It's pretty self-explanatory, really. <laughs> Moving on. Um, choose a special, another food one. If you do eat out, all right, uh, and I know that some of you eat out a lot, like a lot, lot, all right, um, just choosing a special on the menu that's going to be a little bit more cost effective, definitely a positive, like do that. Like it's going to be saving you, I don't know, sometimes it's half the price of what you would normally be buying off the menu just because you like the look of something else. Um, the whole idea of eating out is the atmosphere, you know, someone else is preparing food for you, what that food actually is, all right, um, I'm sure... It's gonna be fine. It's gonna taste great. The special is gonna be as good as whatever you choose. As you know, so you, you get the idea. Always slightly cheaper. Um, all right, number eight. This one a little bit controversial. I will be speaking about this uh, at, at quite some length over the next um, few months. Is in setting big purchase goals. All right, so don't be content with like buying little items along the way, get used to having a bigger goal that you're saving towards and um, and you'll be surprised at how quickly you can start saving up for something that's a lot uh, a lot more expensive that you really wanted um, uh, rather than just a whole bunch of little things. So right now, uh, I'm looking, I would love to buy a car, uh, um, like a hobby car if I can call it that, and I keep looking at these MX-5s, these little Mazdas, and I'm like, hmm, that would be lovely. That's a small goal. I could, I could do that today if I really wanted to, buy one of those MX-5s, but nah, I'm going to go for a big goal and that's a Lamborghini. And I know you're laughing, I can see you're laughing, <laughs> but Lamborghini, big goal. Money stays with us, the money stays in the bank. Um, and then when, if I do get there, when I will get there, it's, I've got a Lamborghini. <laughs> so set big goals, think about that one. Um, number nine, um, when you, um, if you have a hobby, if you're one of those people that have time for hobbies, like me, then set a hobby that is going to be income producing or have a hobby that you can turn into something that's income producing. So definitely um, spend your time, what I'm saying is spend your spare time, if you have hobby time, on a hobby that can make you some money. It's fun. And number 10, well, I think that's 10 already. Anyway, I've got one more on this list. Um, might be 11. Mow your own lawn, all right? Mowing your own lawn is highly underrated, okay? Because uh, number one, um, it takes you what? Maybe a couple of hours, max two hours sort of thing to mow your lawn. But the satisfaction you get from having finished something and achieved something and at, at your cost, rather than hiring someone else to do it, I personally feel a lot of satisfaction from, being that, from, from having that finished and looking awesome. Um, and there's that the intrinsic reward that comes back from that as well. So anyway, that's about it, everybody. And there you go. I, this is a way longer video than I thought it would be, but that 10, 11 um, sort of ideas on sort, sort of things to think about in terms of uh, improving your financial situation by having a little think about money. Anyway, so there'll be more about this sort of stuff on a few of my videos coming up. Oh, I forgot to breathe. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, so hope you've... you've um, you know, maybe got some ideas and uh, and uh, yeah, I'll, I'll expand on these later. So if you haven't already, please subscribe down below. Um, it would really uh, be awesome if you could uh, support me and my channel. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next couple of videos. Bye, hopefully. Bye.